the eighth cranial nerve is known as the vestibular cochlear nerve. Vestibulo to do with balance, cochlear to do with hearing. Uh, it's rather complex, as you'll recall from your earlier studies, but pretty easy to actually examine in the end. If the rhombic sign is positive, it might suggest a vestibular problem. But we also have to look at other aspects of the vestibular cochlear nerve. Testing hearing is fairly easy, albeit a little crude. So the first thing you do is test overall hearing and ask the patient, well, Donica, do you have any problem with hearing at all? No. You don't wear any hearing aids or otherwise. And while that may sound very obvious, uh, a lot of people say, oh yeah, by the way, I wear hearing aids. And you, you know, you, people take things for granted sometimes. So you must continue to ask the questions, sometimes at the risk of sounding a little foolish. Now, I'm going to mask the, hear the air coming in, the sound coming into your left ear by pressing on the tragus here. So I'm pressing on the tragus, and as a gross measure of hearing, I'm going to ask you to repeat some numbers that I'm going to whisper in your right ear, okay? So I'm masking the noise in the left ear. 52. 52. 21. 21. So grossly I know that hearing is okay in that right ear. And then I do the same on the other side, masking the tragus on the left-hand side. If there's a doubt about it, then you move on and do the Rene and Weber, or Weber, or Weber tests. These help to distinguish between air conduction and bone conduction. Normally, air conduction is better than bone conduction. In the clinic, uh, it's fairly easy to find a particular uh, tuning fork. For, pro for posterior column examination, the tuning fork should be a 128 hertz tuning fork, the long one, if you like. For hearing, however, it's a different frequency, and it should be a 5112, 512 uh, tuning fork. So that is, the long one is inappropriate for the hearing test. The Rene test is done as follows, and it's to distinguish between bone and air conduction. So a gentle tap. A lot of people start hitting themselves rather hard and making a bit of a melodrama of this. So it's a gentle tap to get the vibration going. Don't overplay it. And I'm going to place the base of the tuning fork on your mastoid process here. And I, can you hear it? Now, I hold it there, this is bone conduction I'm testing, until it dissipates to the point that he can't hear it. So if you can tell me when it stops. I can't hear it now. And then I bring it over his ear, can you hear it now? Yeah. So now I know that air conduction is better than bone conduction, and thus, all is right with the world. The other test you can do if you're unclear is Weber test. You really don't need to proceed thereafter, but you can go on to the Weber test by placing the tuning fork in the middle of the forehead, pressing rather firmly and seeing if it localizes or lateralizes to the right ear, to the left ear, or it's more or less the same. I usually just ask, is that any different in one ear or the other, or is it the same? Okay, thanks, that's fine.